All right. Good morning and welcome to No Limits. I am Dwayne Adams, Associate Director of the Small Business Center at Asheville Buncombe Technical Community College, where we are changing lives and strengthening communities by being dedicated to student success and delivering quality education to enhance academic workforce and personal development. And of course, the show will not be complete without my lovely co-host, Ms. Laronica Casey. Good morning, Laronica. Good morning, Dwayne, and good morning, Asheville. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe and all that good stuff. How are you? I'm I'm doing okay. Uh, I got a question for you. Have you have you turned the heat on yet? Um, I'm trying not to, but you know, I stay cold, so you know. Yeah, I have to break out the blankets because when I turn the heat on, I start hearing uh, th those dollar signs going. It sounds like a cash register in my house when I turn the heat on, so I have to be I careful. Know, right. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's great to be here. And let's let's go ahead and get into the announcements. We have a couple of wonderful guests joining us today for the show. Um, starting out with a basic law enforcement uh, training recruiting event, BLET will be held on Wednesday, November 3rd, from 5 to 7 p.m. at the AB Tech Conference Center on the main campus. That's right. And also the Allied Health Open House will be held on Thursday, November the 11th, from 3 to 7 p.m., at the Ferguson Center for Allied Health on the AB Tech uh, main campus. So if anyone is interested in learning more about these programs, be sure to make plans to, to visit those two events. Yeah, and AB Tech is proud to work with HelpMate, our local domestic violence advocacy and crisis response organization. As we recognize Domestic Violence Awareness Month, take some time to learn about the resources in the community that do great work to support these survivors. Uh, be sure to visit helpmateonline.org for more information. That's right. And survivors of domestic and uh, sexual violence are sharing their stories of hope and strength to help inspire our community to stand up against domestic and sexual violence and give victims the courage they may need to come forward. Uh, Still Standing is a community-based domestic and sexual violence reduction effort. Uh, this exhibit is on display on the first floor of Ferguson of the Ferguson Center for Allied Health and the second floor hallway uh, uh, connecting Elm and Sycamore in those in those buildings. Um, AB Tech is hosting eight of the still standing silhouettes. So to read all the survivor stories, check out the website at www.buckhamcounty.org slash still standing. All right, and if you have time, please join AB Tech for a mini wellness fair on October 27th at, uh, from 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 uh, p.m. Representatives from HelpMate will be on campus to share additional resources, promote upcoming events, and share volunteer opportunities. This mini event will also feature guests from Our Voice, Mana Food Bank, Pisgah Legal, and more. There are a variety of program services and events that take place at and around AB Tech. Be sure and check out the college's calendar page at www.abtech.edu for more information. All right. Now we're ready? done with the announcements. You, you're ready to get into the program? Let's do it. All right, let's, let's get into it. So for those of you who may have skipped our announcement because maybe you were getting coffee or something, uh, um, getting everything tucked away so you could sit down and, and be completely engaged with the show, um, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And why is it important to discuss domestic violence on a radio program that focuses on the efforts of a community college? Well, it's important because one in five college students report being abused by an intimate partner, while one in three admittedly have abused an intimate partner within the past year. Oh, and by the way, when you look at the statistics, marginalized students, um, for marginalized students, those are even worse. If you really want a good cry, start evaluating the information by race. According to the Blackburn Center's website, more than 40% of Black women will experience domestic violence in a lifetime. In, compar in comparison, 31.5% of all women will experience domestic violence. As Ron and I mentioned in the introduction, there are several events taking place at and around AB Tech as part of the college's effort to shed light on the issue. But what's happening at the ground level? Today, we'll be talking with two individuals who are stepping up in a big, big way to eradicate domestic violence in our local community. So without further ado, I wanna welcome Dr. William Cedarberg. Uh, Dr. Cedarberg is currently a member of the AB Tech Foundation Board. He and his wife, Joyce, have been actively involved in supporting survivors of domestic violence. Together, they have endowed a scholarship designed specifically for those who have received assistance from HelpMate. Welcome, Dr. Cedarberg. Well, thank you, it's great to be here. Thank you for joining us today. And also, I wanna welcome 
Zakia Bell Rogers, who is the Community Engagement Specialist with HelpMate. Thank you for being here, Zakia. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's just get into this, the questions, will we? Shall we? Uh, Zakia, uh, we'll start with you. Introduce yourself to the audience and tell us what your role is at HelpMate. I am Zakia Bell Rogers, and I have been in HelpMate for about four and a half years, and I am the Community Engagement Specialist which means I go into the community and I educate and um, assist agencies and businesses with learning about domestic abuse, um, the, the, the symptoms, the signs, um, the red flags, all of those great things so that they can get, um, get help for their clients or get help for themselves. I do a lot of, um, a lot of, um, education in substance abuse treatment facilities um, to help with um, the, the idea of dating after addiction. And so we, we do a lot of work, community work with education, and that is my part. That's great. And so Dr. Cedarberg, you have a broad, a very broad background. Tell us a little bit about it and how you're currently involved with AB Tech. Uh, thank you. And when you say a very broad background, that really refers to age more than anything. When you guys get my age, you'll have similarly broad backgrounds with lots of experiences. But uh, I've come out of the higher education community. I've been president of three universities and also commissioner of higher education of uh, Utah. And uh, so I've been very engaged in higher education. And, and after I've learned more about uh, domestic violence, I wish now I could replay some of those years and focus more on uh, doing things for our students that face domestic violence uh, situations. So that's kind of one of the things I've uh, kind of regret that I didn't do more earlier. Uh, but uh, retired in 2012, my wife and I, Joyce, moved to um, Asheville and got involved in various activities. So I've been on the UNC Asheville Foundation Board. I'm on a steering committee for My Future NC, which has just created as of yesterday, uh, the area's P20 Council, primary through uh, graduate school and coordination of uh, the institutions. And uh, President Gossett has been a real leader of that. And my and throwing that out as an idea for a future show at some point. And I also chair a WNC broadband.org, uh, which is advocating for better broadband services here in the region. So those are a few of the things. But uh, this issue of domestic violence is uh, such a critical uh, issue, and it has been very personal in our family, uh, more so for my wife, Joyce, than for me. Joyce kind of shies away from this public role, uh, but she's had two sisters that uh, married into a domestic violence situation. Uh, plus, uh, she was a school psychologist before retirement, and she dealt with so many kids as a psychologist that were coming out of abusive situations. And so, uh, it was natural that when we moved to Asheville and started to get involved in the community uh, that we uh, get acquainted with a little bit about what was going on. And we were just blown away by a couple of things. The good work Helpmate has done and Sakia, you're part of that and we're so appreciative of it. Uh, April Burgess Johnson, of course, is a real dynamo and a phenomenal asset for the region. Uh, so Helpmate was significant. But also this coordination of having the human services building and having the help made offices right there with the other social services was very impressive to me uh, coming out of the government world. So um, when we got involved here a little bit, Helpmate was right on the, uh, the top of our list. And uh, Joyce has volunteered to help organize the um, dinner every year. And I've been a contributor. And so it's just something clear and, and dear to us. So, so how long have you been, how, how long have you served on the AB Tech Board? I've only been on the AB Tech Board, I think six months or so. And oh. that uh, came about really, I requested to go on the AB Tech Board, which probably was a little bit strange maybe. Uh, but the reason why is that the longer I've been involved here in the community, the more I've become to appreciate AB Tech and the tentacles of AB Tech throughout the entire region and all the good programming. And I think it's a little known jewel uh, in the region, especially among people like us that had moved here from somewhere else. 
Uh, and so um, I reached out uh, to AB Tech and said, you know, if you have an opening, I'd be happy to be involved in it. And so uh, they took me up on that. So I've been on about six months. Uh, and part of that has been the scholarship that we endowed, but also helping in other things. Thank you. And we'll talk a little bit more about that scholarship, but we're glad you're, you're here at AB Tech. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you for choosing us. It's a great, it's a great institution. And uh, I, you know, I was just really intrigued. I made some notes just in the introduction as you went through what was happening. I don't think, I bet there are a lot of people like me that aren't aware of how many things AB Tech is involved in. Uh, it isn't as well known. You don't have a football team, you know, all that. Uh, and so we used, have a, we used to have a basketball team though. Oh, we did. Well, there you go. Yeah. All right. Here's so get it back to get it back organized. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Cedarberg. And, and Zakia, let's, let's uh, bring our audience up to speed on HelpMate, if you don't mind. Tell us, what, what is HelpMate? HelpMate is a domestic abuse agency that our mission is um, that we are working with our community to eliminate abuse and fear. Um, we've been around for over 40 years. Um, so we're no longer a baby. We're almost middle age and we're, we're working hard to, to keep going strong. We have a 24 hour hotline, which if something happens at two o'clock in the morning, you need to talk to someone you call, we answer. We have individual counseling, crisis counseling, um, by appointment, um, domestic violence, education and support groups. We have temporary emergency shelter. Our shelter is double locked meaning that you have to go through two doors to come into our shelter and they're both locked. So we, we're about security. Court advocacy, we actually have a location in the courthouse where um, survivors can sit um, and wait for their case to be heard and therefore they don't have to be in the same room as the abuser. Um, child and family advocates, meaning that if they are involved with the Department of Social Services, Children's Services, um, we are able to assist them and help be a liaison um, between them and um, the county or the, the agency. Um, case management and referral, and we are em empowered um, led, meaning that we empower the, the survivor to make decisions in their lives and we just support and help guide them um, with, or of course, with their blessing on how to accomplish those things. Um, community education, and that's what I do in professional trainings and meaning that we go into different agencies and train staff on how to address issues um, surrounding domestic abuse. Hey, and, and if you don't mind, can, can you please for our audience define domestic violence, which we also refer to as domestic abuse or intimate partner violence. Just define that for our listeners, please. Domestic violence or domestic abuse is any tactic used to um, cause harm, danger, control, um, uncomfortable, anything that makes to, to any tactic used to gain power and control over a person. And that can be emotional, physical, psychological, financial, um, or sexual. And so there are many layers to abuse. It's not always being punched or choked. It's, all, it's a lot of mind games as well. Very right. good. And so Dr. Dr. Cedarberg, Everyone. can you tell us about your involvement with HelpMate? You touched on that a little bit when you were doing your introduction. Um, how long have you and your wife been involved with HelpMate? Well, that's a good question. I think probably about six years, something like that. And uh, Joyce would be better at answering that than I, because she really, this was a passion of hers. And uh, we reached out to help made in April was uh, very gracious. And we had a group from Biltmore Lake where we lived that went down and got a tour of the facility and, and met with people. And we had a local initiative that Joyce was involved in here in Biltmore Lake to raise money uh, for help made. Uh, and then she went on the uh, committee that uh, helped organize the uh, annual tea, uh, which if she were on, she would tell you that I renamed the, the name Sakia away from tea to uh, wine, because uh, <laughs> uh, 
everybody uh, enjoyed wine a lot more than tea. In fact, Joyce had to hunt a hard to find the tea at the uh, the tea. But at any rate, um, uh, she was involved in that on, on the planning committee, uh, and has just been a supporter. So we do some uh, fun uh, funding of um, helpmate generally. Uh, but it was very clear from her past experience, uh, and I don't know, Sakia, you're the expert on this, but from her past experience and, and our conversation was, it's one thing to help people uh, be protected from violence, but at the same time, you need to build some hope and some avenues out of it uh, to build the future. And so uh, that's how kind of the scholarship came about. And I would enjoy Sakia. Uh, I used to do some radio announcing myself, so I have to be avoid not asking questions. Maybe, but uh, yeah. so yeah, I would enjoy your, your avoiding that. I just enjoy your comments about you know helping somebody take the next step, and that's where an AB Tech really plays an absolutely critical role. So, do you want to speak to that at all? Would you? Well, and how, well, are you talking about the, the scholarship or what we as help? Just, no, just generally, uh, philosophically about helping people to get out of that situation and build a new life. Yeah. And, and the first thing you have to do is empower a person. If um, you've never been able to have, to have control of your life, you have to re reinstate their rights to be in control of their life. And once we get there and we, we rebuild a person, because it's basically what we're doing, we're helping someone to re rebuild their foundation um, so that they can move forward in life and, and then um, not um, become a victim again, hopefully not become a victim again, because we do understand that, um, that one out of three women will be, um, be victims of domestic violence and a lot of times it does repeat because you know they know what to, those abusers know what to look for so what we do um everything is survivor guided they tell us what they need and we help them figure figure out how the best way to get there and so uh, just to give an example my mother um, was a survivor of domestic violence and we lived in helpmate and my mother knew that she wanted to go back to school. And at that time, Shaw Cape Center was here. So what they did was they helped her get her transcripts from all the other colleges that she went through. And this is 1995, 96. So it was a lot of phone calls and not a lot of emails and not a lot of faxing. It was just a lot of phone calls and mail coming in and helped her enroll into Shaw University. They helped her get an apartment. Um, Asheville was completely new to my mom. They helped my mom get a job. And so all of these things were lined up. So my mom went from a single mother of three young children to a single mother with the college education who was looking to buy a home who was working at AB Tech. So, and that was because of the foundation that Helpmate Help set. Um, and so I always tell people, we all have this foundation that we're given and we all have um, um, bricks that aren't useful to us. And what we try to do is remove that brick and put in a healthy brick so that they can move forward and they can have a solid foundation. Very good. And so, yeah, so when you're talking about re reinstating and rebuilding, um, I think that uh, Dr. Cedarberg, you created the Joyce and Bill Cedarberg Endowment uh, mm -hmm. through the AB Tech Foundation. And that was created, I think, in, in 2016. Um, and so what was the impetus behind creating this endowment? Well, higher education, as you know, from both of our background is a, a big value. And so we said, what can we do uh, to help? And um, that's one of the things we like to do is contribute money back to higher education. I think we have eight scholarships at different institutions. And so um, this was a pretty cheap scholarship now. So, it, you know, we didn't put our kids out on the street or anything like that. Uh, but um, it was something that we could do to help. And I knew the uh, previous president and um, uh, Dennis King and uh, well, I just wanted to do something to help. And Joyce was involved in help me. And we thought, I wonder if there's a possibility of, of combining these uh, two interests that we have. And it just seemed like a real natural fit. And so Kia and others really 
have been helpful. I think we're on our third recipient uh, currently. Mm. Uh, and it's fun to meet the recipient and get acquainted. And uh, the first one we actually were connected with to with about three years and she finished her degree. We helped her celebrate the graduation ceremony, uh, took her out for lunch afterwards. Uh, she came completely in her uh, graduation gown, which turned heads at the restaurant. Wow. Which, uh, <laughs> we hadn't seen that before in my experience, but it was great. And uh, everybody enjoyed that. So it's just been a, a nice thing that we were able to do. And I would encourage other people to do it. Uh, of course, in general, uh, the tuition rates and with the federal subsidies, et cetera, tuition levels really shouldn't be that big of a barrier right now mm -hmm. as far as the tuition itself, but mm -hmm. the related costs and family expenses that go along with it are significant. And so uh, this was a small thing we could do. And we really, when we did it, we weren't sure that both Helpmate and the community college uh, were, would be able to connect and, and pull it together because uh, I've been uh, at a number of institutions where our financial uh, aid office and, and local community groups might not have been working so closely together. So it's been a, a very nice, pleasant surprise uh, that helped made us work so closely with AB Tech. Well, the scholarship is fully endowed, which means that not only is it a gift, uh, that will keep on giving, but your legacy will also continue to live on through AB Tech. And so since uh, its inception, we have awarded approximately $5,000 in scholarship funds. Uh, so, and again, the scholarship is designed specifically for uh, Helpmate clients. Um, so we really want to, to thank you for, uh, for, for continuing to, to support our students uh, and helping us to rebuild uh, uh, lives. And so we, we really, we really thank you for that. Well, uh, Leronica, you've been really part and parcel of that whole uh, activity along with Ma Amanda Edwards and company. Uh, and so uh, I'm excited. I think foundations at community colleges are very hard things to build because people have identity to their four-year institution at a much stronger level than a two-year uh, degree comes out of. And so you, you've got a lot of work ahead of you, but AB Tech is a great start on that. I think our total assets are up to almost $9 million currently, and that's pretty wow. good for community colleges uh, throughout the right. country. And yeah. so uh, uh, we look forward to doing more, and uh, you guys are just so good in getting into our pockets. I can tell just from this conversation, <laughs> it'll probably cost money. I'm glad Joyce is not here. She'd be <laughs> writing out a check right now. So uh, it has just been a, a, a good thing to do, and I would encourage others to do it. Right. Okay. And I, I suppose we're about halfway through the show. And uh, for those who um, may just be tuning in, we have uh, two wonderful guests today to discuss the topic of domestic, domestic violence. Uh, we have um, Zakia Rogers, who's from Helpmate, and we also have uh, Dr. Uh, William Cedarberg, who is a member of the AB Tech Foundation. So thank you for being here. Um, and, and full disclosure, um, I have to let everyone know that I, I am a member of the Helpmate board, and I would be remiss if I did not mention, um, Zakia, you had mentioned the women's high tea. We just had the Men Who Care conference um, just last month. And we had a goal of $50,000. Last time I checked, we were pretty close to reaching that goal. Um, so hopefully we, we, re, we were able to do that. I haven't had an update just yet. I'm sure I'll find out at the next meeting, but um, That's great. It, it warms my heart to be a part of Helpmate. And um, it really, um, I'm, I'm on a few boards. <laughs> so I have to give them all, um, you know, their props, if you will. But, but Helpmate was really, um, really near and dear to my heart. When they asked me to, to be a part of that, I was, ecstatic. Um, didn't even have to think about it. So um, if, if you don't mind, Zakia, the term domestic violence encompasses a lot of different types of abuse. Can, can you share with us what some of those are? Oh, of course. Of course I can. Um, domestic abuse is um, a lot of times we don't think of abuse if we're not physically harmed. And abuse comes in so many ways. You know, we were lied to as children. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt. And we think about the times that um, 
someone has said unkind words to us and how it still stings our heart. You know how your heart gets that feeling where it kind of drops right, and that's yeah. still, yeah, yeah. And, and even when you think about it, sometimes that emotion still hits you when your brain plays that horrible trick on you and reminds you of that moment. Well, domestic abuse shows up in financial um, uh, restrictions, such as um, not allowing someone to work or making them go to work and taking all their money um, and having it routed straight to their um, account. Um, um, also, um, if they are working, making making them get fired so that they can't work and, you know, calling the job multiple times, showing up at work, just causing havoc. Um, isolation, you know, isolating the person from their friends, their family, um, making sure that they, they, they have to check in with you first before they go anywhere so you know where they are at all times. Um, emotional abuse, the name calling, the the saying harmful words that, you know, really bruise the soul. Um, and of course, physical sexual violence is, is also a, a big, um, a big issue in domestic abuse. So you have your emotional, your psychological, your physical, and your sexual abuse and financial. Well, and too, Zakia, a lot of times we hear that women are mostly the victims, but are you finding that that men are victims as well? Yes, domestic violence is a cancer of relationships and it does not discriminate. It does not care if you had gold stars as a child, does not care if you're a fifth generation millionaire, it does not care if you're 12th generation poverty, it does not discriminate. Um, it comes, it, it, it attacks all families. And so, yeah, it, they're in, in all, all families and all genders. And wow. so we, we see, and, and a lot of times that gender stereotype comes in, you know, it may be a female abuser and a male victim. And, and one of the things that she may abuse, uh, abuse her power by saying, well, if you hit me back, I'll, you'll go to jail because I'm a woman. You can't hit me because I'm a woman. Wow. So we have to be very cognizant of <clears throat> what we teach our children about um, keeping their hands to themselves and conflict resolution and using kind words and how we treat each other. You know, um, having the relationships are the is one of the biggest things that we do every day. We make relationships, whether right. it's a friendship or um, uh, intimate relationship or a partnership. We make these relationships and no one sits us down and teaches us these things. Right. And, right. and so we're just walking around collecting society's footnotes on how to have relationships with people. Yeah. And I think one of the things that's really profound is I think that a person would be in an abusive relationship and not even realize it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so upon looking at the Helpmate website, and I've looked at it a lot, of course, I noticed there's a, there's a list of around 20 signs of domestic abuse. And some of those I'm like, wow, I, well, you know, I, I was really, um, you know, just enlightened, if you will, uh, seeing some of the, the, the things on that list. And for those who may think that they're in an abusive relationship, would you mind sharing some of those signs uh, with us? I was going to ask, I was going to ask you which one stood out the most to you. Uh, it was, it was like, um, it was like the lack of communication, like uh, not, not telling someone something um, yeah. was really interesting to me. Like um, um, if you're, I guess the way I envision it, and I could be wrong, but it's, it's like, if you are bothered about something in the relationship and you're not addressing it and you're not vocalizing it, it could be, a, it could be a form of domestic abuse. So I thought that was really um, profound. I see how it could evolve into that, but I was really profound that that was on the list. Mm. And I'm not, I don't have that list in front of me, but I do know a lot of those, and, and that is a huge one. Um, that's holding any type of information, like even medical information. Say wow. that you, are, you have an a incurable STD and you don't tell your partner and this person doesn't know that is a type of abuse. 
Yeah, um, I didn't even think about that, but that's wow. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just the physical. It's 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 not it's just a the lot. Physical. Yeah, it's not yeah. just the physical. Yeah. The gaslighting. Well, if you think that's what you saw, um, mm. you know, the playing on the on, on the words, um, when it does become physical, such as, you know, like I, I was watching a TV show and the guy had a scratch on his lip. And the woman said, I don't have any nails. How can I do this to you? And she had, her nails were horribly long oh and they God. were acrylic. And he was like, are you serious? And she said, even if I did do that, which I didn't, it was an accident. So it was oh. saying, yeah. So it's the, the playing of the words and moving the words around. So even in your clearest mind, making them feel uh, making you feel confused, like well, questioning yourself and, and, and all of those things, isolating, moving someone from their, their community, um, mm -hmm. you know, taking away somebody's job, you know, and it, and it, can, it can happen so quickly, like saying, oh, I love you so much. I don't want you to work. I want wow. you to be able to be at home and, yeah. and have, you know, take care of our children. Where if you're trying to leave and you don't have any feel, uh, any, any funds, I'm sorry, um, you can't leave. So right. that's another economic um, restriction that comes into play of abuse. Mm -hmm. So Zakia, how many clients does HelpMate serve annually? Um, well, do just, most of the clients oh. tap into more than, one, uh, than more than one program that you offer there? Yes. And, and most of the time, you know, they usually call the hotline and do case management um, or get a 50B, which is a restraining order. So they're always tapping into multiple, um, multiple um, um, programs. So we mm -hmm. served, this is just from 7-1 of 2020 to 6-30 of 2021. So we wow. have those numbers. We have, we served almost 3,500 people. Wow. Yes. And we responded to almost 4,000 crisis calls. Mm -hmm. And we wow. share, we sheltered 126 adults, 77 kids, and which was a total number uh, for beds that um, total nights uh, in beds was over 9,000. So that is how many nights in beds that we provided was over 9,000 for all those folks. Um, so we're, we're in, in, during this pandemic, yes, we're seeing a growth um, in, in domestic abuse because there, there wasn't a way out. There wasn't a way to get that extra energy out, all those things for kids weren't be able to be safe. And so it was just a rise in that and being at home and being out of work and not sure when your next meal was coming or it, so it was a huge rise um, mm -hmm. in domestic abuse. Wow. You know, I would, I would like to add another element of domestic abuse that is near and dear to Joyce, particularly her parents were very controlling. Her father particularly was a very controlling person. Mm -hmm. uh, and her mother was always afraid really to uh, confront him about some of these things. And then her two sisters believed firmly on a religious point of view that the man was the man of the house and the wife was to be subserv uh, subservient to the uh, husband. Uh, and they never really because of religious beliefs would go to the divorce route or to court because of that religious community and the religious thoughts around uh, domestic violence and that you should be subservient to the man of the house. Uh, and we see that also carried out in their children, uh, Joyce's nieces, who have also married people that are very controlling and and are starting to go through the same thing and the belief is also so it's a cycle so it's a cycle it's a cycle, it's a cycle and cycle. It's, it's partly in her situation and family it was tied to the religious kind of conservative religious beliefs that you didn't dare confront the man of the house uh, with all that the man had the control of the money the man did this that or the next thing and so 
I suspect that that's an issue here in Western North Carolina as well. And uh, there has got to be thousands of people that are afraid to speak up and to take the step to call helpmate or el elsewhere uh, for fear of that religious component of the domestic violence. And um, that, that would be a, a takeaway from Joyce's personal experience that it is very cyclical, very difficult to break out of. Uh, you need help. Uh, and sometimes you have to really confront the religious beliefs uh, that you wow. have about some of these things. Mm. Absolutely. So uh, we're running low on time. So I want to I want to wrap this up with a, just a couple more questions. Uh, Zakia, um, Helpmate offers several opportunities throughout the year, not just in October during Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Uh, so talk to us about some of the ways that folks can contribute their efforts to Helpmate. Well, we always need volunteers. Um, donations, volunteers. We actually have a volunteer training happening in January. Um, and you can call or get in contact or email Christy Price here at Helpmate. Um, and that business line is 828-254-2968. And you can ask for Christy Price or you can email her at C Price, P-R-I-C-E, like the price is right, C Price at helpmateonline.org and she will get you scheduled and you, I mean, funding, um, donations, we need people to um, man tables, all of those things. So we mm -hmm. always need help. We need people to answer phones and we train you. So it's not like you're just going out there without um, any assistance. We train and teach folks. Mm, okay. All Very right. Good. Well, um, Dr. Cedarberg, so something that I've been sharing a lot and, and I shared it in the last show show last week is about legacy regarding legacy. It's, um, I say legacy is not what we do, but it's what others do as a result of our influence. So in addition to this fully endowed sco scholarship, what type of legacy would you want to leave behind? <laughs> uh, when you get a certain age, you're afraid of those kind of questions because people are thinking. <laughs> Wayne's thinking, boy, that's an old guy there. Uh, what, what's, what does he want to leave behind? Uh, the, that uh, your bio, your bio is what influenced that question. I didn't I I know. never laid eyes on you before wow. today. I have a buddy who suggested <clears throat> that when you die, you leave your inheritance to your grandchildren, but they can only get it through an ATM uh, at your graveyard. You know, you set up an ATM machine out there. Um, I've been a huge believer in the legacy issue as a leadership principle. It isn't just a matter of when you're older and you say, what is my legacy? But Dwayne, you have to think about your legacy when you leave, what are you gonna be known at AP Tech for how you lived and what you've done? And that's true for absolutely every single person. And so in my presidencies, I, I try to talk a lot about that legacy because it's also a legacy determination of knowing when to leave a job. So I was president of Utah Valley University, and the big issue there was becoming a full university. It was a community college, and we moved it to a regional university. And when we got the legislative approval to do that and, and millions of dollars to do it, that was my legacy at Utah Valley, because I'll let be forever known as the president that was there when it became a university. It didn't matter what I did after that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was time for me to take another job and to move on. Well, when you think about this, all of us have to think about legacy and it's, it's partly personal as far as what you're gonna be known as. Uh, get me going on this, I'm, time is running short. I'll, I, I'll, I'll tell you my Aunt Gertie story. I'm into genealogy, I'm busy researching in Iowa. I didn't know anything about Gertie Cedarberg, Aunt Gertie. And so I fell into a conversation at the Burger King with these old timers at the table. And I said, does anybody know anything about Gertie Cedarberg? And the guy says, oh yeah, uh, I knew her. Uh, I was a postal delivery guy and she was mean and she was ugly. And uh, I thought, that's not a good legacy. So wow. I asked my uncle who was like 95, uh, Uncle Larry, Lyle said, what about Aunt Gertie? And, and he said, oh, she wasn't much to look at and not very nice. So that's not the legacy you want. Uh, and what you really, I think you need a personal legacy. And then you also need kind of a professional legacy. And my wife and I like these scholarships, not because of being us being remembered, 
but under the concept of paying forward, that if you're fortunate to have made some money, how do you pay forward what people have done before for you? So that's kind of my, my <laughs> philosophy, if you will, of all this stuff, is that right. when we're cold and buried, uh, you know, it's going to be exactly one generation before everybody has forgotten who you are. Right. Uh, and unless you can have a statue built on you or something, people aren't just going to know it. So the issue is how do you pay something forward and help future generations? And so uh, that sounds like a college president doing a fundraising technique, but <laughs> I, I apologize for that. You get, you get but, it honest. Like, you get it honest. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think that's what it's all about. So we're happy to help out. It's not that's not that much. Uh, but it's something, and if everybody can think about, I get absolutely upset when I drive through really wealthy neighborhoods here in Buncombe County. I mean, we have so much money in mm. this county, and especially right. older people with money, and this huge transfer of dollars that's going to occur right. in the next 15, 20 years, right. and yet we have foundations, like where I has to work hard to get money for the AB Tech Foundation, and we have to Work hard to get uh, money for help made, et cetera. So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'm on a soapbox now. I, I apologize for that. So what we've done is not that big of a deal. Um, and it's nice that you are paying some attention to it, but we really have enjoyed helping now three students and want to help more as we go along. Exactly. And so Zakia, can you tell us where to go for more information about Helpmate? You can go to the website, um, Helpmate. Um, online.org, or you can give us a call, the business line at 828-254-2968. And we're also located in the Family Justice Center, which is at 35 Woodfin, across from the YMCA, next to the Radisson um, Hotel. Very good. Thank you both for being on this show. Thank you for what you are doing in our community for, you know, for our, uh, for, for our college. And we really appreciate you. So thank you so much for what you do. Thank yeah, you. big, big thank you to Dr. Cedarberg and, and Zakia uh, for coming on to the show. Uh, be sure and tune into our next episode of No Limits. Uh, thank you for listening to this edition presenting collaboration with WRES 100.7 FM radio, where respect is in the music and AB Tech Community College, where we are changing lives and strengthening communities by being dedicated to student success and delivering quality education to enhance academic workforce and personal development. We wanna thank Randy Weston and Ms. Sophie Dixon and the Empowerment Resource Center for helping us to produce a great show. And we also wanna thank the late John Hayes who created this great platform who allows our voices to be heard throughout our community. Please support Black Owned. And if you like hearing our voices and would be interested in supporting WRES, please visit the website at WRESFM.com. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm Dwayne Adams at 828-398-7951. And Leronica? 828-398-7562. A big thank you to our guest and thank you for listening. Have a great day, Asheville, and be safe.